always goes so fast, so fast, so fast, so fast. I always try to check in on any of our major yearly events and we are in eclipse season, especially for this month. So I want to talk about it. So we're going to kind of break down what a lot of us have been seeing. We have an eclipse now, I think today actually, even though a lot of these energies open up weeks before and they will be going weeks after. Don't ever get so bogged down on the day. The day doesn't matter, but because of the linear timelines we get in, we get kind of focused on the day, but don't focus so much on the day. Focus on the energies of what's been playing out, what's come back in. A lot of stuff will kind of come back in because we have to deal with it. We're getting to that part of the year where we talked about a little bit at the summer solstice. We talked about stuff is going to start coming up to clear. You're going to have certain things start to come up. I've had two specific things this year. One kind of came back out of nowhere a couple weeks ago. The other one had kind of been underlying this whole year that I've, I've, I've been in this timeline. It's been here. Even though, even though I say I've been in one timeline, I kind of switch in and out of a couple different ones, but it's been a prevalent theme. You know, it's been a very prevalent theme that we've been going through. Okay, so Look at what was happening at the summer solstice. Look at what's coming back around now. Look at something new that's coming now. But don't get bogged down on the event. You know, we're going to always tie eclipses to something, you know, in the old school is oh, something's got to end, right? I used to believe that too. And to, to an extent that is true. It's a very even thing for someone to look at on a timeline and say, okay, so something's got to end during an eclipse. It's more the energy you've got to work through. It's never the thing. It's what the thing brings up. It's what the thing represents. It's the thing that ties you to an old timeline. It's the energies that tie you to the old timeline. It's the emotions that tie you to the old timeline. It's the beliefs around the event that tie you to the old timeline. It's not the thing, okay? The thing is just what is needed to get to it, okay? So don't get bogged down on what it is. Don't get, and you'll probably have a lot of judgment coming up on what it is. You know, anything that comes up, we usually judge ourselves on how we feel about it and we don't want to be pissed about it. We don't want to be jealous about it. We don't want to be angry about it. But wait, I am all those things, but I don't want to admit I feel those things. The whole point of these events happening is for us to feel those things. It's for us to get into that energy and clear it, into those emotions and clear it. Start separating things out. I did a video on Twitch a couple days ago, but it was too long to post on here. That's why I came on here to do sort of a a little mini recap. I try to check in with my Instagram people on any major events. When we're in the middle of this stuff, stuff coming up, separate out what's going on and separate out your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body, and your energy body. You can have an event happen and maybe it just affects your physical body, but you don't have any, nothing's going on with your emotional body. Or you might have something come up and it kind of drains your energy body, but you don't have anything emotional coming up. Your mental body, you don't have any story around it. It's just kind of there. Focus on what it's triggering. Start picking it apart. You know, you might just have something come up and you might not even feel a lot of emotion around it, but you have a lot of story around it. You know, if we have a lot of story around it, we're trying to clear the story. We're trying to clear the root of the story. That's a very human thing. When we have the story around it, that's our human consciousness putting the story around it. You know, you're always going to have the story around the thing when it's your human consciousness doing it. When it's your higher consciousness telling you to do something or giving you a guidance to do something, don't do something. Usually you don't know why you're doing it till long after you've done it because you have to clear all the emotions and the, the fear you maybe had around doing the thing you know you have to do. Whether it's you have to talk to this person, you have to leave this job, you have to move to a different area, you have to leave this relationship. We might feel like we have to do it and we know it's coming from not our human perspective. It's not coming from our human aspect. It's coming from something higher than that. And the clue is, how do we know? How do I know who's talking? Because we talked before about, you know, we do the opposite. When we first start going through our awakening, our ascension, if we never spoke, then we got to start speaking up. You, you go the opposite pendulum for a lot of balance the energy back out. You're going to do the opposite thing. If you always were talking, you shut up. You know, you don't say anything. <laughs> There's still kind of human reactions to it, right? I can ignore it, which is a very human reaction, or I can fight, and that's still a human reaction, but they're the opposite pendulum. So you're still balancing out the energy, and you're clearing a lot of programming by balancing out the energy, but there's still human ways to go. Neither way is highest aligned, 
But in the moment, we can't tell what's high sign, so we will go one way or the other just to balance things out, to do something different, to try to get a different ending. You know, because what we've done before, it never freaking works, so fuck it, I'm gonna do this now and see if this is different. It might never be the highest line thing in that moment. Well, I don't want to say never be. It, it might not be in that moment. Normally when we're doing either of those, it's not the highest aligned thing. It, it's, it's aligned to something you're trying to clear, but is it the highest aligned thing? But in that moment, you can't see the highest aligned thing. You know, you can't feel the highest aligned thing because all this stuff is in the way for you to clear to get there. That's why when you, you feel you're supposed to do something, if there's a story around it, if there's a lot of energy clearing around it, even the emotion around it, if you're resisting it, if there's, if there's a story there of what happens if you don't do it, that's your human trying to get you to do it. Your human aspect's trying to get you to do it because it's framing a story, right? Your higher aspect's not gonna frame a story. You won't have a mental, your mental body won't be involved in it. You're, you, it's not gonna try to frame the story around it. But you might have a lot of emotions come up because you don't want to do it. <laughs> you might have a lot of energy clear about it because you're afraid to do that thing you know you have to go do. But you won't have the story around it. You won't even know why you have to do it. Why do I have to go to the store right now? I don't need anything at the store, but I know I have to go to the store right now, so let me just do it. Even though, for whatever reason, someone I know might be at the store and I don't want to face that person or whatever the reason is. It's going to be different for everybody on how their timelines are merging right now. But separate it out. And that's a good way for us to figure out who's talking. You know, when I would get very clear messages from higher aspects of myself, before when I was channeling, they would always kind of come in um, from like above my head, on the right side always. And I, and I felt like it was something else. And we always kind of identify that stuff as something else because we haven't reached the frequency of that thing to embody in that aspect of us. It's just us. We can't channel anything but us. So anything else that is out there on that, it's not possible. You can only channel yourself. You're only channeling higher aspects of yourself. You can't channel anything else. That's what you're going to have access to. So when you're hearing that stuff, especially a lot of people hit it in meditation, you hit it in your dream state in the beginning, you're going to hear a lot of that stuff coming on. You might not understand it. You know, you might not know why you got to go do that thing. You might not know why you feel called to go on that vacation or called to do that. But you don't really have a lot of story around it. You don't, you just know you got to do it. And it's this pressing. The only way I could describe it back then, it would just stay on my mind until I did whatever the damn thing it was I had to do. It would just be there and be there and be there and be there. And I could not even get on to anything else until I did that one thing. Because our universe knows there's little parts and pieces of every reality we have to do. You know, you might want to skip to this reality over here, but until we do this thing over here, we can't get here. You know, no, we got to do this timeline here. This is not a sexy timeline. This is not one I, my human would choose to do, but I have to clear all the programming that I can clear in this timeline to get to the next one. I can't even hit this one until I go through this one. But our human doesn't like that answer, you know, and that's another clue for a lot of us. You know, if we keep getting an answer, but we keep saying we're not getting one, it's because we don't like the answer we got. We don't want to have to go do that thing. But normally it could be, it could have been years later. Now it's it typically is not that long for me anymore. It might be days later, it could be hours later, you know, weeks later until I know why I had to do that thing. Because the information is in a different timeline. But until you clear the emotions you have about doing the thing, you can't get to the next timeline. So we have to look at it and feel really into it. Okay, what? who's trying to get me to do something? Are you being really pressed to do something? Your higher self is normally not gonna put you on a timeline, like you have to do it now, you have to do it now, you have to do it now. Now, there's a caveat to that. If you knew you had to do it for a long time and you've avoided doing it, which a lot of us had done, the timeline will collapse and you're gonna to have to make a choice. <laughs> but normally that happens because we never made one. You know, we waited until the last minute, knowing it was gonna collapse, and we just said, shit, just let it collapse around me. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do this thing. I'm so resistant to doing it. You're gonna to have to bring the whole thing down around me before I'm gonna do it. And the minute we say that, our universe says, okay, whatever. If that's what you wanna do, that's what you're gonna do because tick tock, you got somewhere else you gotta be. And this timeline can't exist anymore. Your frequency is now so beyond this timeline, it's gonna crumble. So a lot of times that, that can happen, especially in our earlier days of ascension, that will happen because we don't wanna leave certain things. No matter how miserable some timelines were, there was some kind of comfort in being in them. There, there was a comfort in being in 
you know, human realities are cult-based realities. But there is a comfort in being in that cult for a while because at least everyone else around you is drinking the same Kool-Aid you're drinking. When you stop drinking the Kool-Aid and you start looking at the timelines and realizing that, you know, these are not, these are very distorted timelines. You know, these are very distorted actions. These are very distorted, none of this works. You know, none of the human collectives, none of those beliefs, none of those constructs, none of that stuff works. You feel this kind of urge to get out of it. You feel this urge to go on to the next thing. You don't feel really the reason to stay there anymore. But that can be a scary thing. We resist that for a while. We try to take some of our higher consciousness knowledge and plug it into the old stuff and, and try to get it to work. You know, let me see if I can take this, these ideas and plug them into the human realities and make them work. But that doesn't work. Because those ideas are trying to pull us out of them. So it's kind of like we keep trying to utilize these things to pull us out of these realities, but we don't realize that's what we're trying to do. We think we're trying to retrofit these old realities. Eventually we realize it doesn't work like that. So these eclipses really start to highlight what you can't take with you, okay? What you have to clear to be able to do your 2020, what are we in? I don't even know, 2024 template. You have to know what you have to do for that 2024 template. And a lot of us might have already seen what we have to do. Some of us haven't seen it. I've seen some things, but I haven't seen the whole thing yet on what I'm supposed to do. I have some ideas of what I'm going to be into next year. A lot of that starts coming in, you know, when we get to the, the fall equinox, you'll start feeling it. You start clearing a lot in the summer solstice. You'll start really feeling what can't come with me because the same themes start coming up again and again and again and again and again. You think you've cleared a part of it and then you get hit with it again and you're so pissed about it. So it's like, oh, I haven't cleared enough of it. Now we got to go through another experience for me to get to a deeper level of it. And we have, you know, we were clearing, we're finishing out our 2023 timelines. We have our new 2024 timelines. It's all happening at the same time. You know, some of us, you might even be seeing some 2025 timelines start to come in. Some consciousness you're trying to anchor in. So when 2025 hits, you can physically have boots on the ground to do those timelines. When you get to 2025, it all happens all at the same time. That's why it can be a lot to stay on top of ourselves and what is going on and what am I trying to get through? What am I trying to clear right now? What is the theme here? What is the cobweb? You know, I've been cleaning out a lot of cobwebs, especially outside in lots of the outdoor areas. And you have to get to the whole web. You know, we get to a strand of the web, web and a strand of the web and we're like, okay, that's great. Let me just now continue to clear them out. We think we've got the whole thing, but you have to get all the webbing. So even me doing that externally, I'm also doing that internally. And some of the stuff that's come up has been some stuff that's kind of been setting out there for a while, but I really didn't want to align it. I didn't know how to align it in a sense. I didn't feel like I had the tools in that sense to align it, which kind of brings us to, you know, what can we align? You know, what, what can we do? What's available to us? We can't drag shit in that's not here. I can't call so-and-so to help me with something if they're not in my reality. Unless we feel very strongly they're supposed to help us, but normally if they're supposed to help us, they'll just show up. <laughs> we try to drag them in, then we're now disrespecting them and what's highest aligned here. Highest aligned is not getting them in here. They're supposed to be in your timeline, they'll be there. If they're not there, they're not aligned to be there right now. All of them. But it's our human that doesn't want to accept that. It's our human that doesn't want to say, well, damn, I really wish that person was here. They're not aligned to be here. If they were aligned to be here, they'd be here. You know, we've seen people, and I know we've all seen people pop up out of nowhere right when they were supposed to be there. But when the shit starts hitting the fan and we really want someone to be there and they're not, you kind of hear your human go, oh, wait a minute, that person has the resources to help us. That person has the resources to help us here. But that person's not here volunteering those resources, which says a lot about, could say a lot about that relationship. It could say a lot about an imbalance in that relationship. They're not offering those resources. They're not asking about this situation. They're not involved in the timeline. So technically I can't use them. You know, they're not on the board. You know, that's that old saying about, you know, who's on the board, who's not on the board. Right now they're not on the board. They're not something I can tap into. They're not something I can tap into to help me with this timeline. They're not on my board right now. They might be on my board 10 minutes from now. They might be on my board two years from now. They might never be on my board again. It's us that can't accept that. We're the ones that want to drag everybody in. <laughs> it's that human group DNA mentality that we have to all stay in a group. We have to all stay together. 
You know, there's some people that you might love their energy, but from a consciousness perspective, you don't want to be around them. You know, they're just too, in their human consciousness, it drags on your field and you just cannot, it's so distorted, you can't keep it around. It's an old aspect of you, you've transcended that aspect of yourself and you just cannot, you can't align it. They're not ready to go to the next phase yet. They're still in a different phase of their process. Their DNA timelines haven't kicked in yet where they now feel like it's time for their awakening. It's not their time yet. No matter how much you might love their energy, you don't love their consciousness. You can't exist in that consciousness. And then we have the flip where we might not like somebody's energy, but their consciousness brings something to the table. They're on the board for a reason. We just might not like being around them that much. A lot of our galactic family is like that. You know, we might like their energy. We might not like their energy, but the consciousness they can bring to a project is very beneficial to the project. Do I want to hang around with them all the time? No. <laughs> and as soon as we're done with this, they can go their separate way again because a lot of those galactic, the galactic family and soul family, they're two separate things. Galactic family, we usually don't want to be around very much. A lot of it has to do with galactic wars, galactic bloodlines. We just, it's kind of too much, you know, we're, we're all kind of, we might come together for a little while if we're both in our strong galactic phases to get something done. But at the end of the day, we don't want to be around these people. So you're going to see it both ways. Consciousness is the direction you're always going to go after a while. You're going to get tired of playing in the sandbox with people that are still in their human consciousness or even in the fourth dimensional consciousness, you know, one foot in both worlds, one foot in human consciousness, one foot in human realities, one foot in higher aligned realities, or, you know, starting to get into 5D and above realities. So you don't really start aligning those realities till you get into 60, 70, 80. 5D is just kind of the intro of feeling the feelings of higher vibrational realities. You're not actually retrofitting anything yet. So sometimes if you're in a 8D reality, you don't want anyone in 5D reality with you because the consciousness is too different. They're in a love and light and everything's beautiful phase and you're like, well shit, I got a line all my life and I really don't need to hear that right now. I got all this stuff that's distorted that I did as a human that I got to now try to align or close out or leave and create something else. And someone just saying love and light all the time, it's great, it's fluffy, it's beautiful. And when I was there, it was great, it was fluffy, it was beautiful, but right now I don't want to be around that. It's not helping me right now, you know? It, it's, it's draining me right now because you're not doing anything. You're just talking about it, but that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know, so if you're in that phase, you're going to gravitate toward people who are in that phase because that's where you are. But if you're not in that phase and these people might come around for a little while and they might maybe re, re help you find some of your magic again, because they're just in that discovering their magic phase. And once we've gone through numerous timelines that don't work and trying to retrofit old ones and tr just just knowing that they're going to dissolve and then don't even get involved in them anymore and our worlds get very small and we've pretty much got rid of all the stuff that's human distorted realities and then we start trying to set up new ones but there's really no one in those realities right now because we have to learn to exist on our own to become sovereign we have to learn to do all these things someone in even a higher consciousness but a different consciousness can come in to help us out Maybe just to discover a part of us again, help us reinvigorate that magic again. But they're not where we are. And, or it can be the opposite. You, you know, if you're in that love and light and beautiful phase, you don't want to hear about how all the realities are collapsing and now I got to reform them and now I don't know who's going to be in them. You know, those are heavy realities and they're not there yet. They're not in the middle of that because they're in a very important phase and it might not be our phase. There's different, different phases in just fourth dimensional realities. When you've got the one foot in both worlds, you can be in the beginning of that, just beginning, beginning into maybe st um, crystals and tarot cards and Reiki or whatever you're utilizing, astrology, numerology, human design, anything you're into in these phases. But if you're in just about to exit out of fifth dimension, or fourth dimensional realities, that feels really foreign to you. So. There is a balance there on what is the consciousness we're in, what's the consciousness of our body, what's the consciousness we can hit. We're always going to work within the three in the sense your consciousness might be able to, you know, you might be hitting 12th dimensional consciousness, but you've only anchored in ninth dimensional within your body. You're going to always be working usually within three and you upgrade from there. But it's important to remember when we get to these eclipses, kind of what I guess I wanted to say from the beginning. When you get to these eclipses and you see all this stuff happening, you know, 
even if we keep a very clean yard and we keep it very clean clean energetically as far as what we have in our field and what we try to align what's there and we try to keep aligned what's there once we get it aligned we don't let that shit go out of alignment anymore we can still see some stuff skew you can see it in the collectives start to skew big time right now a lot of hate clearing a lot of you know victim energy clearing a lot of guilt and shame and blame a lot of that is clearing right now in the collectives and if we have that in our body, if we're attached to those collectives anywhere, we're going to feel that. We're going to feel that to clear that. Even if we felt like we've cleared our own, you know, micro stuff years ago, now that the collectives are clearing certain things, we might go back through it again. We might go through a, a blame, shame, guilt, anger phase all over again. Because that's where the collectives are right now. And certain collectives are really into that energy clearing right now. But don't get so bogged down on what it is. It is not personal. <laughs> and none of the events that are happening right now it's not personal you know it, it we can take it personal which our humans gonna do none of it's personal it's all in a sense prescripted it's all agreed to ahead of time it's all this is how this is gonna bring the next collective through this is what's gonna happen in your little micro universe to bring you through if we take it personal then we get all into our human stuff now it's gonna clear some of our human stuff but we're gonna suffer a lot more as we go through it it's not personal it's just to get us to the next phase anything we have to deal with and if you don't know, right, and there's a couple things right now, I'm not sure the highest way to align something. It kind of popped up out of nowhere. I didn't expect it. I was very shocked it happened. And now I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the highest way to align it? Let me clear all the, first I took a week to clear any emotion I had around it to see if I had any more emotion around it. So let me get that done. Clear the emotions out of the way because that blocks what we can see. Now let me look at it. You know, and if we still can't get to it, you can play the outside game a little bit. You know, is it aligned for me to do this? If it's aligned for me to do this, I'll get a text from so-and-so in the next two hours. Okay, I didn't get that text. That's not aligned right now. We're going to take that off the board. Okay, if this is aligned, I'll get a text from this person in the next hour. Or such, such event will happen. I'll see this type of bird, this type of animal. These are games we can play for a while. Eventually, your universe takes those things out because it wants you to get to it without all the external help. But, but if you are kind of stuck, those are things we can use. But when you get the answer that that's not a line to do, and sometimes the easy thing to do, which is like, well, I could use money to align this, you know? Well, that's not a line. But, but that's kind of what your human wants to do because it's the easy way to do it. You know, money is the easy way to tape over realities, but you really don't align anything. You just kind of put a pin in it and you go on to the next reality, but you never work through anything. Now, that's why money is taken away from a lot of us during our ascension process, different parts of our ascension process. One, we don't know the value of money. Two, we have to understand our, we have to understand what our worth is without money being involved. It's our presence, it's not the money. In human realities, it's always about the money. But in higher realities, it's about your presence, it's about your light quotient, it's about your soul quotient, it's not about the money. So we have to understand that. And if we keep using money to align things, we never go through the emotions of why that thing is popping up. We're just putting a Band-Aid on it. And then we're going to get a wor we're gonna get a, a more severe reality again. Eventually, we'll get to a reality where money can't fix it. But as our human, if there's money involved and we have the money to fix it, that's our first go-to. We're going to use the money to fix it so we don't have to feel it. If you're avoiding feeling the reality, you're not really trying to clear it from the body. You're just avoiding it and saying, hey, I don't want to deal with that now. Give me a harsher one next time that maybe money can't fix. So don't ignore what's going on right now. You, you might feel, okay, it's bothering me. I'm going to look at it. But you still might not be able to align it right now. Maybe it's like, well, okay, I'm going to work through it. But maybe I don't align it for a month from now. Maybe two months from now, I get maybe I get the money I need to align this reality when I don't have the emotion around it, when I've worked through the reality where now I can use money to align it because I'm not hiding from the reality using money to align it. I've gone through it. I've busted through my fear of this happening because, okay, it already happened. Guess what? Nothing happened. I'm still standing. It was okay. So I, I don't have to, I can get rid of that fear here. A lot of the stuff that comes up right now is a lot of fear. That's why we don't want to do something. Because we have a fear around doing it. We have a fear around the shame of doing it, the blame of doing it, the judgment of if we do that thing. That's why we don't want to do something. It, it's not because we're lazy. <laughs> it's because we don't want to face it. We don't want to have to work through it. We want to be able to scotch tape over it, which is what our human was always going to do if money was available to help us do that. Or we could just run away from it. We could dip and dodge. I had a friend that would say that all the time. I dipped and dodged away from it. 
and he knew he did it and it, he owned it you know it's like oh i'm just gonna not deal with it and eventually it'll go away or i just won't i won't respond to that person hopefully they'll get the hint and go away well sure they might get the hint and go away but your universe is gonna say okay well you're not ready to deal with it so we're gonna have to tee it all up again we're gonna do another reality we're gonna tee everything up again and then we're gonna we're gonna just go through it all again maybe new people maybe the same people well, maybe we'll recast some roles maybe we'll, we'll just have reoccurring ones but you're gonna go through it so you're gonna deal with it now technically every time we go through a, a microcosm of that reality iteration of it we clear something of it but we could have cleared a lot quicker if we just face it head-on the first time we could have gotten to a deeper layer of it cleared instead of trying to pretending it's not happening a lot of the eclipse stuff shows us so much deeper than just oh that that relationship's ending or oh this is ending uh, eclipses tend to bring about endings or bring about some sudden change I and mean, it's just what they do it's the energy of helping us move forward it's I don't get too affected by the full moon and new moon anymore but I do feel stuff on the eclipses and a lot of this has to do with what has been happening all year you can't go to the next timeline while you're still playing in the old one so anything that's come up that has to clear and if it's a pretty strong coming around again on something don't ignore it because you cannot start your new one and if you're delayed in starting your new one then you're just going to be more crammed and rushed later on trying to get through everything you got to get through in that new one these are happening because you have other places to be you have other timelines to take take part in you have other things to explore and to create and if we keep playing in the old ones you cannot create new ones so i think that is a it was a little harder than i wanted to come on today <laughs> it really is a little tougher than i wanted to be but it felt necessary okay so i, I will pull a card to see i usually sometimes i forget but i I'll, I'll, will see a little bit of what what's kind of okay let me see all right Ooh, this is a good one okay if it's not aligned on a soul level it's not aligned on a soul level when it is aligned on a soul level it'll be easy and that is a kind of a, a great way to end when it's aligned it's easy okay the reality is easy if it's not aligned it's not easy if voices are being raised the shit is not aligned if we've gotten to the point where people are shouting it's not aligned it's already gone so far out of alignment and we've allowed it to go so far out of alignment that now it's not even a question if it's aligned <laughs> screaming is is in no way saying this thing is aligned if you're pressured to make a decision and you have not let it set if you've let it set then it's on us because we knew we had to do it and we didn't do it but if we are being pushed to making a choice and we have to someone saying you got to do this immediately no we don't we don't that's bullshit unless the caveat is if I knew I had to do it and I put it off for eight months if someone's saying you should do this no one should no one should open up anything like that no one should be telling you what to do if you're not soliciting someone's opinion and the same thing with us if no one's soliciting our opinion we don't need to be giving it because they're not going to be open to it anyway it doesn't matter it's time to clean our own houses here it's time to look at what's going on in our field it's time to look at what's going on in our world our world we can't be worried about everybody else's when it's aligned it's easy if you're going through stuff right now and it's not easy it's not aligned and your universe is trying to show you ways to align it get you to detach from it where you can see how to align it we have a lot of chords and emotion to it we can't see how to align it if you're at a place where you can't see how to align it clear the emotion around it you'll see more I promise you that I promise you you will see more if you just clear the emotion around it and don't be afraid to let everything I've ever let go and I don't even like that phrase that's a very human phrase letting it go once I resolved it and just let it dissolve I realized that if it was supposed to be there it would come back into a different iteration it would be a different type of relationship a different type of way to maybe spend time with this person or or it it, it never was an end in a sense and even if I felt like for right now this could be an end for a very very long time this could be an end for like 10 years you always know that in some timeline you just don't know what's going to happen and as we create the new we have to let the old go and if we don't we just get stuck and we just get in these suffering and awful situations again and again and again and again because we don't want to let it go so all right I think that has that's beaten it to death at this point so okay everybody happy happy eclipses and I'll probably check in when we have the next eclipse <laughs>